Hello all, welcome to the next video of lab one part three. In the previous video, we added the clock debound circuit, push button debound circuit in our logic. And we got the output, which is the clock change. It goes to one for one clock cycle whenever one of the push button is changed. We need to make use of this along with the increment and the decrement push button and the minute set uh, switch to set the minutes value to any of the desired value. So basically we need to update this value. So update this module. So what we need to do is that we need to pass this output of the debound circuit to the digital clock module. Then uh, we need to also pass the, our additional input, which is the increment push button to tell whether to increment the uh, minutes or decrement push button to know whether to decrement the minutes. And this will happen only when this switch is one. So that is also need to be passed to the our circuit. Okay, so with this, we need to modify our corresponding digital clock model. So let's open the digital clock module. So in the digital clock module, uh, we need to add the input, input that is clock change, then input INCR TB, input DCR. EB and another input is minute set switch. Okay, so these are the updated uh, model definitions of the digital clock model. So uh, there won't be any change in the seconds counter because we are not changing or controlling the second counter but we are controlling the minutes counter. So what we need to do in the minutes counter? In the minutes counter, based upon the push button, we should be able to set the minutes to any known value. So in the current one, we are uh, making resetting the minutes to zero after it reaches to 59. And uh, in the rest of the case, whenever the seconds reaches the maximum value, we are incrementing the minutes to one. So in this case, what we need to do, um, so in this, uh, what we need to do, we need to now update other, add the additional logic. So what we need to do, if any of the push button is pressed and the corresponding switch is there, then we need to add, uh, we need to update the corresponding mean value. So if minute switch is set and the corresponding incrementer push button is set, so this is one condition or Okay, you can combine these conditions also, but uh, I'm just trying to keep it as simple as possible. Or minute switch is set and the decrement push button is set. Okay, so then we need to update the minute next to some set value. This set value will be, we will determine in some other uh, circuit so we'll say that the new mean range. So this we need to calculate. What is this value? So this is the new code we need to add. So what we are saying, whenever that switch is one and one of the push button is pressed, you need to update the next value of the minute as per some logic. So we'll calculate this value. So again, I'll define the corresponding uh, this variable. Again, it will be IO down to zero. 
initially it is zero and we also we may need the corresponding next variable okay so now uh, this is the variable which is unknown to us okay so now uh, this variable is now this variable by default you can see that this variable will have the value of the corresponding current value of the min minutes when the switch is pressed an increment is push button is pressed then we will increment it by one otherwise we will if it is a decrement push button is pressed we will decrement it by and then we need to take care of the saturation to 59 to 0. And uh, if we are decrementing from 0, it should go to 59. Those saturations will need to take place. And we need to take into account this clock change. Okay. Because this guy will change based upon uh, the, the clock. This, for this guy, the clock will be the this clock change. Okay. So uh, what? we can write always at cos edge of block change okay so new mean range is equal to new mean next okay and we will calculate this in another combination circuit so what we are saying at the clock change which is the 250 hertz clock we update this value and this value is updated again you can instead of this clock you can also use the other clock uh, which is your Okay, here I think in, you can't, you don't have the higher clock instead of clock one. I think this is better because it is, uh, it is actually changing the clock at the whenever the corresponding, it is actually going to one whenever the corresponding push button is changed. I think this clock is more than sufficient. You can use eight megahertz clock as well or one K clock as well, but I think this should be sufficient. Then uh, always at star begin end so now what we need to do we need to see what should be the value of this guy so this guy value if if the min set is equal to min uh, uh, minute set is switch is set and increment is equal to 1 what we need to do, we need to increment the value by one. But for that, we need to see what is the current value of the mean. If the current value of the mean range is 59, okay, if it is equal to equal to 59, then we need to have the new mean next should be equal to zero. Okay. Else, what should we do? New mean next is equal to new mean range plus what? Okay, so this is what? So current value of the new mean range is the current uh, uh, value of the uh, uh, is equal to next value. This next value based upon the push button is whether the push button is switch uh, press or not. If the increment push button is switch, we need to increment it. But if it is already 59, we need to make it to zero. So now um, else if this condition okay then if new mean range is equal to zero if it is already zero you can't decrement it so you need to set the next value to 50 
Yeah. Else, you mean next is equal to you mean dredge minus one. Okay, so if none of the push button is pressed, then my new mean next should be equal to my current value of the minutes that is the mean count register because that is what the I should modify. So this is what my logic should be. Okay. So what I'm doing, I'm taking the current minute value in my internal register. Then I'm taking whether the any of the push button is pressed. Based upon that, I'll find out the new value and that I'll update it in my previous logic. Okay. So this is how we have modified our corresponding code. Now, after we do the modification, the, the remaining part is that we need to update our XTC file. So in the next video, we'll update the XTC file and we'll see whether our code is working or not.